should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. This should be played at high volume. Preferably in a residential area. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Voted as best local podcast in Tampa Bay by the Creative Loafing. You're listening to Hoppy Hour. What up? What's happening? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, and we have some special guests live on the show. Why don't you guys introduce yourself and what you're about to the listeners? Hi, I'm Maria Latinos, and I am the organizer for Fuck Up Nights Tampa Bay. Hey, I'm Brent Britton. I'm a technology lawyer. I'm currently in Tampa, Florida, and I am one of the uh, participants in Fuck Up Nights Tampa Bay. What is your job like? What are you going to be speaking about? So, uh, so I spoke. I spoke at a prior event for Fuck Up Nights, and you know, my goal was to tell people that look, failure is okay, and I, I think that's really the entire theme of what Fuck Up Nights is about. Is that, you know, when one begins the process of becoming an entrepreneur or working with a startup, one has to expect that there are going to be failures. That you're going to try some things that fail, and occasionally you're going to have to pivot and try something else. Marie, you agree with me? Yes, and um, uh, this is what this entire event is about. Um, they do it in over 144 cities around the world, 53 countries. Yeah, they were doing it in uh, Paris, I saw. Everywhere. Um, here in the States, uh, Atlanta, Miami, New York, um, D.C., Silicon Valley, of course. So it's it's pretty much everywhere. Is that basically the hub of everything going on in the future of the world? Because there's that there's that show called a uh, Silicon Valley. It seems like that's basically the place that everything happens. Well, here's the thing. So I you know I spent the '90s in Silicon Valley before I moved away, and it, it's a, it's a remarkable and amazing place. And what they've realized in Silicon Valley is that look, you know, entrepreneurship should be based on evidence. That you know you don't start a company based on a gut feeling or a dream. You start a company based on the fact that you've identified a problem, you've got a solution that people want to pay for. And so occasionally, you know, you're going to make mistakes, and you're going to have to you're going to have to regroup. And they just know how to do that really well in Silicon Valley. And that's why they're the gold standard is because they figured out how to deal with failure. Sort of like a comedian or an actor that goes to Los Angeles trying to be the next big thing. Does that happen a lot where people go to the valley thinking they're going to be the next jobs or Apple and then it just bombs? Well, sure. I mean, I think, you know, I think a lot of people go to Silicon Valley expecting to just hop off the bus, <laughs> yeah. drop their suitcases and, you know, get discovered. Yeah. Or, you know, but that's not really the way it works. OK, I mean, look, there's a lot of money in Silicon Valley. And w- look, what Silicon Valley enjoys and San Francisco in particular enjoys that the rest of the country really doesn't is that it is the definition of a progressive place. You yeah. Know? That the folks out in San Francisco understand that the hot new thing might be just as valuable valuable is the old reliable thing and they're willing to write a check okay to invest in the hot new thing most of the rest of the country we're pretty conservative yeah we are very boring right yeah because you know the hot new thing no that's scary that's weird that's that's frightening we don't want to invest in the new thing until it's tried and true and it becomes the old thing remember when everyone thought the iphone was going to be a bomb because you had your ipod and you didn't need it yeah it's one of the dumbest things ever yeah exactly right you know what 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 people in silicon valley have have sort of begun i think to almost institutionalize is this notion that if somebody's got a good idea, they've identified a market, they've demonstrated with some amount of data that people will pay for that idea, um, then they should succeed. And there's sort of an upward pressure on success that, that look, it makes it an incredibly special place. There's no question about that. Now, when it comes to the uh, data, what is the key to knowing if you have enough and you're original? So I think that, look, you've, if, if you've got a good idea and you have a hunch in your gut that you've solved a problem that people want solved, you've got to go talk to them. Because here's the way we used to do entrepreneurship, okay? We used to say, I've got a good idea for a product or a service. I'm going to build a company. I'm going to build a brand. I'm going to build a prototype. I'm going to work, work, work. I'm not going to tell anybody about yeah, it, okay? Yeah. I'm going to keep it secret. And then I'm going to build it. And finally, six months later, I'm going to launch it on the world. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. And I'm going to hope that everyone loves it. No, we don't do that anymore, okay? That's stupid. Why is that stupid? Because the first step after you get the idea should be demonstrating 
seeing that there is a market need for your product, right, Maria? So yes. when the when the entrepreneur gets the good idea, the next step is to go to the marketplace and say, "Hey, customer." Would you pay for the solution? Do you even have this problem that I, the entrepreneur, believe that you have? And let me tell you, what when you ask how much is enough, the fact is if you go to an investor, a, a venture capitalist, and you say, hey, give me a million dollars. Invest in my company and yeah. give me a million dollars. Their first question is not going to be, do you feel it in your gut? Do you really think yeah. this is going to be right? Nobody cares about your gut. What they care about is how many customers have you talked to who have told you that they will pay for the solution to their to their problem? OK, so how much is enough? I, you know, I don't know. But you if, look, I'd much rather walk into a venture capital pitch and say, I've talked to a thousand people. I've done a survey. OK, I've talked to a thousand people and they've all said they will pay for my solution once I build it. What is the key to doing a survey where they would actually pay attention because a lot of times I'll do surveys and I just kind of like fill it out just to get it done. What is the key to knowing if the survey is reliable? It, look, that's an that's an excellent question, okay? Because, you know, when it, when it comes right down to it, a survey, <laughs> yeah. an anonymous survey is pretty <laughs> meaningless for yes. the same reason that you suggest because I just want to get through it. I want my $10 Target gift yeah. card, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, exactly. give me my Starbucks gift card and let me out of this crap. No, I, I think the way real entrepreneurs really do this, and I'm sorry this is bad news because it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. You go out in the field and you talk to your customers and you look them in the eye and you have a conversation with them. Because, see, here's the problem with entrepreneurship is people fall in love with their idea. Yeah. And they think, hey, customer, you want my thing. But instead you should go – It's Entrepreneurship is a scientific experiment, okay? And true scientists are objective, and they, they don't know what the outcome is going to be. So the true scientific entrepreneur, the evidence-based entrepreneur, should go talk to the customers and say, hey, what is your problem, yeah. by the way? What is the solution that you would pay for to solve that problem? And then when they collect it, when they look into their customers' eyes, yeah. and the customers say, oh, my God, I would pay $1,000 a year to have a solution to this problem, that's what you set your company agenda on right there, okay? So you don't, you don't figure out what your company is about until you know what your customers want. What was your key to getting it done in the 90s? What were some of the things that you came up with? Uh, well, listen, you know, in the 90s in Silicon Valley, I was a lawyer, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was running a startup law firm that represented startup companies, and my job was just to do the stuff that they wanted done that they didn't know how to do themselves. I mean, we lawyers, we're about, we're, we're the same as plumbers, okay? Yeah. You can do your own plumbing, dude, right? Like, you yeah. can go in your bathroom, you, really you can get out the hacksaw, and you can cut the pipes and get the wrenches and the whole thing. But you're going to go to Home Depot five times, and you're going to spend all weekend. You call a plumber, you spend 200 bucks, they get the job done. So that's what we are. Uh, you know, as a lawyer, I'm just here to get the stuff done that people don't need to figure out how to do on their own. Now, at these fucked up nights events, what are some of the best advice over the past few years at these events that you guys have gathered over the years that have come to your mind that you haven't forgotten about? Well, um, the I'm just familiar with Tampa Bay. Yes. Unfortunately, I haven't had an opportunity to go to any of the other fuck up nights around the world. Um, but uh, something that stood out when Brent spe spoke at the first one at the launch of Fuck Up Nights um, was ideas are nothing, execution is everything. Yes. Um, and that kind of stuck with me because <laughs> yeah. I thought that was like, wow, yes, absolutely. Um, so that's what stood out. And. It's and it doesn't just have to be for tech industry uh, people. It doesn't have to be just for Silicon Valley. It could be for any industry. Uh, entrepreneurs share two things, in my opinion. They share success and failure. So you know, you hear so many great stories about success, and that's phenomenal. But I think the more interesting stories are the ones about their fuck ups and how did they get from you know uh, fucking up to being such an accomplished individual. Is it possible to go through your whole life and be successful if you keep on doing your thing, or is there a point where when you keep on having success, you're going to fall down? No. You know, I I, I I mean, I, I I think that anybody who goes through their life and never has a failure, mm -hmm. never has a moment when they find themselves down on their knees. Uh, <laughs> Literally. Like know. she fell before. <laughs> exactly, right? With Suddenly you need a Band-Aid. Yeah. Uh, is living a charmed life, okay? okay? Does it happen? Sure, of course it happens. I think just statistically there are people who... Who you know you roll the dice and you 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 win you know or you, or you bet on red and you get red every time but let's face it you you know anybody who's been through 
anything in life be, beyond their, their, their teens or their 20s has recognized that a lot of success depends on being in the right place at the right getting time. Getting your foot in the door. Getting your foot in the door. And it's, you have to be tenacious and you have to be you know, passionate and you have to be there, right? You have to be involved in the moment. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I, sure, do people succeed without ever failing? Yes, of course. But I think the do. most successful people are the ones that do fail, like Michael Jordan when he didn't always win in the playoffs. And even guys like going to radio, Opie and Anthony or Howard, they were kicked off the air. They were told they would never make it because they were too edgy, and then they ended up making millions of dollars. Absolutely. So it seems like the people that did fuck up are the ones that ended up winning in the long haul. Well, Michael Jordan is a really great example of this, okay, because Michael Jordan was a horrible high school basketball player. Yes. Okay. And he, 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 you know, he nobody would have identified Michael Jordan as being the greatest basketball player ever. Einstein, Albert Einstein, flunked high school. Are you math, serious? Okay, I didn't even know right? that. Like you oh, know, yeah. okay, because but but you know what makes the difference between losers and winners is that they keep working. And this is something that I, as a parent, try to instill in my children. And I, as people, as someone who who gets to shepherd entrepreneurs, tries to instill in them as well is that there is no substitute for hard work because the minute you stop paying attention the minute you stop working you might make mistakes okay you might fail but it's the hard work that actually leads to success so 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 i've got a question so if like when do you say enough is enough if you're working on something and you come across so many roadblocks when do you say you know what i (laughs) i'm done fuck this yeah like (laughs) i need to find something else to do look if you when do you if you feel in your heart that something should work okay you just know that you know babies on spikes it's a good business model right okay i just want to put babies on and and you've got to be a scientist right you've got to go out and you've got to test the market and if 99.9 percent of your market is saying, no, man, no, I'm not going to pay for that. I don't want that. Then you, at some point, you're just stupid if you don't pay attention. To, and that's and so that's what really the fuck up nights and the failures is all about. OK, because what you hear at fuck up nights is you hear about people who didn't see the writing on the wall. Yeah, like Chuck, they, right? they, 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 they believe, like right. They believe, they believe, they believe. Later, he's like, no, no, okay. I am like, this I think that's work, being a narcissist. Work. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, it can be right. OK, because any scientist who was out to prove that. It, you know, one plus one equals seven would do experiment after experiment after experiment. The data would come in wrong, yeah. and the scientists would make up an excuse for why the data was wrong. No, because I know it in my gut that one plus one equals seven. Well, eventually that person is crazy, and you yes. just you don't write him a check anymore at that point. Okay? It kind of reminds me of these guys in radio that try to be like Howard, and then they bomb. And they go, it's because they didn't give me, man. The bosses didn't give me. The oh, listeners listen, the didn't first give me. Time, no, the first time you hear an entrepreneur, I don't care what, what business they're in, whether they're in radio or technology or biotech or whatever, the first time you hear them say, oh, the reason I failed is because the other guy didn't get it. <laughs> or, right, right? Or, or the customers <laughs> didn't get else. it. Okay, then walk away. Okay? Give up. <laughs> because they're missing the point. The point is that other people are either going to get it and pay money for it or they're not, right? Yes. And if they don't get it, then it's your fault, not theirs. Would you say the key is you need to be creative and innovative to win in the long haul? You know, I, I, I don't know about you, Maria, but I think the entire history of humanity is about innovation. Yes. I mean, the, the, you know, the fact that we're sitting here in this modern studio with, with electronic equipment. And, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. Okay, it was, it was 100,000 years ago a blink of an eye on a cosmic scale that we would have been sitting here pounding rocks together. Okay, People <laughs> I mean, seem to forget that 10 years ago we had a flip phone. You know what I mean? Year, right? Yeah. 10 years ago it was a Nokia. Okay? Um, wow. And, you know, with maybe you had blue lights in it or something. I mean, <laughs> the idea of getting your email and your texts and your entire life on your in the palm of your hand. Look, I started in computing... I started in computing in the early 80s. Aren't I first, you, like, the fir- the I first logged into, I logged, I logged into, yeah, 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 there's some credentials there, but yeah. I, look, I, I was on the internet back in the early 80s when it took an entire room full of equipment to house a, a, a 16 megabytes of memory. Oh, my okay. God. <laughs> All right? And now I carry, what, a terabyte on my, in, yeah. in my pocket. Okay? So, you know, yes, innovation is the reason, it's the mantle that we all carry as human beings, and it's where we're going, and it's, we'll never stop. It's it seems like the internet is ruining things, though, because it's losing creativity because everyone's just copying everybody else. Do you lazy. notice that? Yeah, yeah. You kids get off my lawn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Because, no, look, I, I can open up. 
I can open up Vine, I can open up Instagram, I can open up Facebook, and I can see more creativity coming from the average human being than I've ever seen in my life, well, okay? And, and they're becoming celebrities. Absolutely. These YouTubers and Vine, and, like, they're becoming celebrities. Now Now they're producing shows for, like, Netflix. But even, you know what, even if they don't, okay, even if they don't become a celebrity, even if they don't profit from it, it's amazing some of the stuff you can find mm-hmm. on the Internet. And you know what? why that mm-hmm. is because of the democratization yeah of media production. Years ago, we couldn't, you couldn't sit here, you couldn't do this show unless you had this studio. Yeah. And now you can, let's face it, we could go out in the parking lot and we could tape the show. Okay? Oh and yeah, I, for and sure. I use the word tape because, you know, what I'm What are you 50, in 1992? Right? <laughs> we don't actually use tape anymore. Okay. But the fact is, we could do this on our phones. Yeah. All right. We And, and so can that guy and that guy and that guy and some guy, homeless guy sitting in his car in the parking lot could do this podcast. And that's the democratization. That's why you got to work even harder is to beat out the competition. And because you don't know who's coming up, man. It could be some eight-year-old in Podunk mm-hmm. who got his daddy's iPhone and did some really cool Vine. And the next thing you know, he's got a million hits. Do you feel threatened by the younger crowd? No, I love that. No, no, absolutely not. No, more power to them. Okay, I mean, look, anyone who stands here and says, you're threatening our way of life or that's new and crazy and I don't like it, they're just missing the point because the new and the crazy will always come. Yeah. And you know what? It's coming faster today than it's ever come in history. There was more innovation on this planet during the past 24 hours than there was during the past six months. I mean, it's just incredible where we are. and It's a wonderful time to be alive. Here's what I hate, dude. Here's what really grinds my gears is the recent hate my generation has been getting and they seem to forget that I'm not going to use that word. I I despise I despise the word millennials. Whoever came up with that term is brain dead. It is one of the worst terms I've ever heard. (laughs) Baby boomers, project or generation X, cool names. Millennials. It sounds awful. (laughs) But do you get the point that we're getting too much hate? We're in her twenties. It's like if we're thirty five and we're fucking up Fine, but everybody in her 20s fucks up. I am really getting tired of the hate that my generation gets. It's like nobody's ever perfect. Shut up. You know what I mean? I, I, look, What's I, your take I, I, on I, that my, rant? My, my, my take is that any hate or negativity... Uh, directed towards any dress- generation is a waste of time. Okay, because it's like get over yourself. Yeah, exactly. Because look, let's 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 identify something. Throughout human history, old people have always feared young people. Okay, look, these kids today with their fancy spears or their or they're rubbing two sticks together to make fire. Why, you know, they're in league with Lucifer. Let's let's you know you know come on, this is silly. Okay, innovation comes from the youth, and and why? Because they have an open enough mind and they're prepared to see the possibilities where where let's face it old people unfortunately by 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 i guess you know evolutionary design tend to be somewhat predisposed towards liking sameness and there's a reason for that okay because because we come from herds of animals and schools of fish for whom for whom sameness is a survival trait, okay? And, yeah. and, and standing out from the crowd gets you eaten. And the entire job of an adult is to prevent the young from doing stupid shit so they yeah. don't get fucking eaten, okay? <laughs> so so that hits us right in the right in the viscera, okay? When so when we see these young kids doing something differently, I think I think our, our instinct as old people is to say, No, no, we'll have none of that. Just get get back in line and come back in and eat your dinner and go. Yeah. That early, you know. It's what like- I love too is when people your age rip on social media and the things that are seen on social media of us partying. It's like, oh, because you guys were perfect when you went to Kiss concerts. Yeah, no, or you yeah, saw Led listen, Zeppelin. Listen, Shut listen, up. Let's face it. Okay, you know I what said, I mean. As I have said, I'm approaching fifty. Okay, um, I, I, you know, I did my share of share of stupid crap when I was Maria. Did you do your share oh, of? Stu- oh, yes, Come on, yes, let's hear yes. it. Come on, <laughs> no, no, you know you did. That, that's a completely. Different I've heard show. the stories. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, okay, yeah. this is an uncensored show. You can say. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's a different show. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So yes, look, there, there, yes, there is, there is an, there is an, there is an age myopia that a lot of people my age and older. You know, look at the younger generation, have this weird tendency to kind of say, you know, cluck their tongues and go, tiss, 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 what are these idiots all about? And what they're forgetting is that, yeah, they were there once too, and they once had. The, 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 the very the, the, the very image of what it means to be human and all the possibilities of infinity in their minds and and unfortunately they've had that beaten out of them over the years well, and, and and I think now with social media it's more in your face because people obviously they take pictures of where they 
are and it can happen what they do yeah. and it's on there like so maybe i don't know maybe that's that's a factor look every every old generation has always feared the stuff that the young generation does okay and and i don't think anyone alive today whether they call themselves a millennial or a teen or a gen x or whatever should pay one whit of attention to anybody from the older generation or the younger generation who's criticizing them for being who they are if you want to get on vine and 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 and, and you know do some crazy crap and for and, seven and seconds yourself and get some exposure then, yeah. then go for it you know what because you've got an audience and you're entertaining. And nowadays, that's really what matters. What I like about you is I feel like you can speak to anybody and motivate them. And you're not I just going to speak to Project uh, or uh, I keep saying Project X. That was some bad comedy from 2012. You can speak to Generation X or Baby Boomers or my generation and influence them. How do you do that? What is your key to speaking to a room of 20-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 70-year-olds, and grabbing their attention? How look, do you do it, Brent? Look, How do you what, do you know, it, Brent? Look, what, my, you know, so there's this Tell wonder. Secret there, <laughs> my secret sauce. <laughs> my secret sauce is that I'm a human being, okay? There's this wonderful scene in, in, in Harry Potter. We've all seen the Harry Potter movies. We've read the Harry Potter books. In the first book, when Hagrid comes to... To Harry, who this poor kid who's been living under a cupboard his whole life and thinks he's just, you know, a downtrod, the worst human being anyone could ever think of. It. And this guy comes to him and says, Harry, you're a wizard. Yeah. And and that's my message that when exactly I speak like to him. <laughs> you're a wizard, Harry. Okay. It's, it's like, like he just walked in like, the room. It's like, dude, you are a highly coordinated matrix of the exhaust from an exploding star. Okay? Yeah. Right there. Let's just freak the fuck out about that. Okay? <laughs> For a minute. Like, like you're a functioning bag of mostly water. Okay? <laughs> that can, like, walk around and say hi to people and put a microphone in his mouth and say shit. That people will actually listen to and pay. That's a miracle as far as I'm concerned. So the fact that we're just alive, walking around. We're, the, we're, the, we're like, the, the, you know, the intelligent slimy film that gave, you know, that's floating on a rock in space, and we're here worried about what one generation does as opposed to another, good God, there are way more meaningful things at work here, which is you have been given a life. You have been given what, you know, a few hundred thousand heartbeats. You've been given 80 years, 90 years, 100 years. It's a gift, okay? It's a gift. Welcome to the banquet. The food is free. Eat, man. Dude, right? I want to go. And, okay, I want to go and, run a marathon. Live You're it pumping the fuck me up. up, okay? Because there's nothing you can't accomplish. There's nothing you can't do. And if you want to change the world, go for it, okay? Mm-hmm. But what you, what? Listen, just to bring it back to the fuck up nights, is like, do it wisely. Don't go try to change the world in a way that's like, I know people want to put babies on spikes. Do it in a way that makes sense. You know, go ask people what they want to pay for, and then make that thing. Why do you keep bringing up babies on spikes? Because it's, it's yeah, the thing. It's my thing. It's because it's the stupidest thing I can think of. All right? It's the, it's the absolute, because nobody would ever invest in I babies I promise on you in five years you're going to see There's that gonna on late night TV. Yeah. I'm like infomercials. I know. And you're going to say, and God damn it, why didn't I invest Britain in that? baby on spikes. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. will be talking I'll be so proud. Exactly. <laughs> Here was my big mistake when I suggested that they put babies on spikes. Now, when you go up there and you're speaking to the audience, is it sometimes improv? Improvised, or do you have kind of a prep? No, there? it's always improvised. I, I I hate to speak from a script. I, I, Why? When I, when I speak, because it's it's not authentic. It's if if I script it ahead of. No, here's what I script. When I'm doing a pachakcha, okay. When I know I've got six minutes and I've got like twenty seconds per slide, I write a script. Oh yeah, you okay. Have to. So because I, I know exactly what I want to say. But if I no look, I think Abraham Lincoln said. Um, if I if I have to give an hour long speech, I can do it right now. But if you want me to speak cogently for ten minutes, I need a week to prepare. <laughs> you know, that's so, brilliant. Like, he had some right? fuck ups too, Abraham Lincoln. No, he did. He, in fact, yeah. yeah. How did he right. fuck up? He like he fucked up like his entire. Um, he ran for so many um, uh, uh, spaces in or seats in uh, uh, in politics. And did he lose? He did lost, he lose an he election? Lost, I don't know how many times. Oh, I think but he did he kept actually. Going, yeah. So that's but why. He kept fighting. My he was question tenacious. was like, when do you say, you know what? Because he could have said, you know what? I'm done. I may not After make city council. One. I may not make dog catcher. I may not make senator. But by God, I can be I'm president. I'm going to be president, exactly. and he did. Exactly. So. Wow. What is the key? Now, this could go for me trying to get a job in radio, a bigger job, or for somebody trying to build a company, doing whatever in life. What is the key to being overly passionate? But not being a pest, because I'm trying to find that happy medium. What is the key to showing that you want it without being too cocky? 
you know, look, I mean, if, if you're if you're adding value to somebody else's life, um, then then eventually a door will open for you. Now, look, po- politics inside of a company is a very strange beast. And there are, there are plenty of people in leadership positions inside of corporations who you can't be smarter than. Okay? Yes. You know, if you want to work for them, you can't be better, stronger, faster, smarter. I'm sorry. You have to find a way to make all the good ideas that you have yeah. their good ideas. So, unfortunately, if you want to succeed within that kind of structure, uh, you know, you have to find a way to, I hate to say it, but be political. Because then it comes down to politics. What do you mean by that? By mean, but you have to work the system. You have to say, hey, you know, uh, hey, boss, remember that good idea you had uh, last week? You that, have to kiss some ass. You have yeah, to kiss ass. ass, exactly. Because, again... Unfortunately, there are two kinds of mindsets, I think, in general, and this is a very gross overstatement, okay, but there are two kinds of mindsets. There's a fixed mindset, uh, and there's a growth mindset. And the fixed mindset person says, I am the best, I am awesome, I win every battle that I get in, and no one can beat me, and no one can be better than me. And if you work for that kind of person, you need to figure out a way to serve up every good idea that you have (laughs) as though it's their idea, and then thank them for giving it to you, okay? But then how are you going to succeed if they take all the credit? Are you screwed? It's yeah, you are. No, no, you are. If you're working for a person like that, then you have relegated yourself to basically being on their team, which means they win and they get the accolades and you have the pleasure of knowing that, you know, you were you were part of the supporting But cast. do people like that burn out after a while because it seems like that would be the key to burning bridges? You know, I think in general they do. I think that's the kind of person that everybody works for, um, but but they're a bit of they they have a tyrannical personality and and they know every Everybody knows that when push comes to shove, they're going to jump ship like rats from a sinking ship. And when the SEC or the FBI or the NSA or whatever governmental agency comes calling, you and every other underling is going to crawl out of the woodwork in order to testify against that. Have person. you seen this happen? Uh, over and over again. Oh, man, over that must over. be great. No. Look, people who, people who, people who run... Uh, who who lead through 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 tyranny and fear? I can't deny that they will succeed for some period of time. There's no doubt about that because people fear them and they're powerful and they will succeed. But but it, in a, in long term, I do think they burn out. No, I do think they burn out. The best and and most successful leaders are those who surround themselves with people who are smarter than they are. And they have to admit that they're not always the best. Who admit exactly? Who are once again we come back to scientific the 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 evidence based entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship does just happen at the startup company with no funding. Entrepreneurship happens in the C-suite at the upper echelons of every major corporation in America. And and, and, and the people leading those companies, if they are smart, they will surround themselves with a team of people who know how to do their job way better than they do. Now, what are some of the key points and topics and main themes that you will be talking about on Fuck Up Nights on right, April so j- 21st. Quick correction there. I'm not speaking at Fuck Up Nights on April 21st. Okay. I spoke at the I spoke at the Charter Fuck Up Nights right. uh, the back launch, uh, uh, yeah. a few October. months ago. Yeah. Okay. So right. he was and, one of the three uh, okay. original yeah, speakers. And, yeah, and, and the points, boy, if I can even remember them, but the points that I made was, you know, uh, yeah, an idea is worth, you know, a dime a dozen and execution is everything. Um, and and you've got to make sure that you're producing a product that people want to yeah. buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and honestly, you know, sales is everything. If you can make the best product in the world and you can't figure out how to sell it what's the point because you know at that point you're just an ego trip as opposed to anything else now what are some of the things that will be going down at fuck up nights why should somebody come because maybe they're going hey i got something else going on april 21st why should they come it's free <laughs> that's that's the first thing um, yeah free, free booze free, it, free... free vodka wow uh, wow sponsored by right. touch I'm vodka done. i'm there um nice. free beer um and uh we'll have premier photo booths there so you can take pictures that's gonna also be um uh sponsored as well which is good because um, i haven't taken a picture today yeah <laughs> so it's time um so you can take a picture of yourself if you'd like yeah I'm just saying remember a time before we took a picture every day like i was thinking was about that <laughs> It was weird. I was looking at some pics from like 10 years ago when you actually had to go to Walgreens and wait an hour for right, a pic to come right. through. They look so shitty. Right. And God forbid they were like personal. You were like, dude, don't make copies of those. I was at the uh, gym and I was watching Kobe Bryant highlights because they were showing it on ESPN. 
and there was this game they were showing, and I'm going, what's this from, 2000? It was from 09, and it looks so old and grainy. I You're like, crazy. oh, my God. I was flipping through my iCloud yesterday, and I was like, when did I take that picture? And it was like 2 p.m. yesterday. God, that's like ancient history. I know. It's surprising <laughs> how fast things are going. How do you see things going in the next 10 years? Crazy. How things bad? going to go crazy. Here's why. Um, artificial intelligence, okay? We now have... Finally, artificial intelligence is starting to happen. We have an AI one on Jeopardy, okay? So we have, we have artificial intelligence not just playing chess, but playing Go, and, which is a huge, like chess times a million, chess on steroids. Um, you know, I think we're going to see a computing device that you can hold in your hand or at least sit on your desk that has the computing power of a human brain within the next five to ten years. I am not kidding. I'm not going to say it's going to act like a human brain, but I'm going to say it's going to be able to work as fast as a human brain. Yes. And that, that leads to – because big people talk about big data – the, the end point of big data is the is the like the big machine that analyzes everything and figures out the right answer for everything. Yeah. And that's where we're going to go, okay? We're going to go the machine that knows everything and says, no, don't take 4th Street or Gandhi to get home. Take the Howard Franklin because I'm monitoring not only traffic but the weather and the mood. Is this the, good or bad? I think it's good. Of course it's good. I don't of know if it's, it's good, good. though. It's good. Don't do that because now you're being the fucking – you're being the, you're being the Gen Xer. <laughs> <laughs> you're being the you're being I'm the not, boomer looking at the millennial. Of course, it's good. <laughs> good Innovation point. Innovation is good. Okay, it's good. Can it be misused? Yes. Everything can be misused. Can it be used as a tool of oppression? Yes. And so we have huge problems. We have to all be vigilant and make sure that our government doesn't do bad things. Look, if you put a if you put a, a, a monitoring device, a phone in your car, can the government figure out how fast you're going and send you a speeding ticket in the mail? Yes. But we haven't let them do that yet, and we need to be careful. Not to you know let you know the powers that be overreach, but look. Would uh, what's his name be able to do that? Trump would he do that? Oh my God! You know I I don't even want to. <laughs> the, the, the 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 iceberg of which you just referenced the tip is so huge and craggy. And Why? What's wrong with Trump? Oh man, you know because I don't like him. But at least he's entertaining. Okay, I mean you know you got to ask yourself if Trump became president of the United States. Would 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 the Daily News become a very entertaining experience? And I gotta tell the you, the Huffington Post is oh, it's horrible. I try to find prep for my show, and it's all Kardashians. And then here's why we hate Trump. It's like at some point, Trump can't be that bad. I mean, the media is just annoying. What do you think, Brent? Is yeah, Trump think, that Brent? bad? Uh, it, it, Trump Trump is uh, is you know he's. Um, so there's a certain sense of decorum that one expects from people in the upper echelons of politics yes. in the United States, okay? You expect good grammar. You expect good behavior. You expect, uh, uh, you know, people to sort of uh, conduct themselves according to, uh, uh, you know, certain rules of decency. And unfortunately, Mr. Trump has demonstrated himself as one who doesn't care about that sort of thing. What I don't like is him on Twitter going after Megyn Kelly. Oh, my God. Move yeah, no, on. She, yeah, no, you don't can, see Obama going after Shepard Smith. It's like, no, shut up. No. Yeah. I, Ridiculous. You know, I, 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 I'm, I, I think it's probably unwise to get into deep pol- political discussions. Yeah, and, and I know. I, show I, about I know. entrepreneurship. But, but I, 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 I hear what you're saying. Um, I think that there are some people who are sitting back and sort of waiting mischievously for the Trump presidency just so they can use it for fodder for their comedy routines. So so if he, so if, because you hear, at least I've read, you know, uh, worse things about Trump than like all the bad things as opposed to like the good things, because that's all that's out there. So why... Is he like beating everybody else in the polls? Look, you can't deny that there is a large. I mean, is it like because Ted Cruz is a creep? Well, but there's a large faction of people in the United States who hear what somebody like Trump has to say, and they go, "Yeah," that's, and they that's like me. watching I wrestling too, and they think it's real. And that's the bigger problem. You see, <laughs> the, the the bigger problem is that there's there's even a single person who could hear someone like Donald Trump spew the the acid that he spews and go, "Yeah, you know, that's 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 that that's sense. that's yeah. the guy from." He says what I've been wanting to say for years. Right. 
Right, and so how are we failing? Shut up. You know, the citizenry. How are we not educating and bringing people into sort of this age of enlightenment that we in the technology world see ourselves in? And 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 you know, it's it's unfortunate, but there are people in the world who hear Trump say his racist and sexist and and otherwise inappropriate things and go, yeah, goddamn it, that's the. Everyone talks have. about him being racist. Everyone really seems to overlook how sexist he is. Oh no, no, no! I don't think anyone overlooks that. I, I, I kind of think. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he look. He he talked to Megan on the first debate. He, he basically right. he referred to her menstrual cycle. Okay, and he's called Rosie <laughs> O'Donnell a pig. Oh my God! No, it's insane. No, it's insane. even though it's true. And, you know, but there, I saw a clip the other day where, where somebody was interviewing him and uh, Marla Maples and and talking about their first child, who was an infant at the time. And the, the interviewer said, "You know, what does the baby have? Your eyes?" And and Trump said something like, "Well, you know, she she has Marla's boobs or something." And it was just it's like, dude, are you <laughs> kidding me? It's like, come on, man. I mean, you know, he he went to Wharton. Okay, he's reasonably intelligent human being. He knows how to behave. I think he's putting on an act. I think he's just having but, fun. But if he, okay, but fine. But if he is, just like any other actor, the audience is applauding, and you're going to keep giving the people what they want. Okay. Yeah. And so the more that people sit back and say, "Yay, Donald, tell it like it is," he's going to just keep giving people what they want. He I, really I has clip, changed I saw over the years. Clip earlier today, with it, where a dude, an African American guy went to a Bernie Sanders rally with a sign that said free hugs. And guess what? He got a lot of hugs. And the same guy went to a Trump event with a sign that said free hugs. And you know what people were saying to him? They were saying, hey, dude, why don't you go back to the hood and get your free hugs in the hood? Okay? And did, trust me, the guy didn't get any hugs from the Trump supporters. And, and so that's when it becomes, that's when the entertainment factor and the rhetoric becomes dangerous. When people start hating as opposed to loving. Have you look, seen the movie Idiocracy? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. No, I mean, look, the, the whole point, and I, come, I argue this with my libertarian <laughs> friends all the time. It's like, you know, look, everyone cares. Everyone wants small government, okay? Nobody wants to pay taxes. But you know what? I like the roads. I like the fire department. I like That's the police point. department. Yeah. I like the army. I'm happy to pay taxes to make certain things happen, to make society more stable. And, and what I don't like is I don't like this notion that that we are not a community. We came together as a country, as a community, as a village, as a tribe, whatever you want to call it. So that we, what's the point of that? We just want to live in caves and throw rocks at each other? No. We come together as a community so we can fucking help each other. Hell okay? yeah. When you stumble, I want to pick you up. Unless it's you, Maria, yeah, in which case, well, you know, maybe we'll find you a Band-Aid. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Sorry. Sorry, you're on your own, kiddo. We've got a show to do. But um, what is the point of any society coming yeah. together if not to mutually support each other? And I think there are some on the political spectrum who would who don't believe that, who think that, no, 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 you leave me alone. I'll leave you. I can hate who I want and, and I can I can I can do I can reject who I want I can discriminate who, who I want to discriminate against. And I got to tell you, I, I don't believe that. I think we're better than that. I think we as the United States of America are, in fact, what Reagan called the shining light on the hill. And we should come together as a community and help each other and 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 make the world a better place and not not hate and not discriminate and not say stupid shit least of all the people in the fucking white house for god's sakes what i like about you is you're very outspoken and you tell the truth so where can people find everything you're up to oh my god well so they can find me at brentbritton.com that's b-r-e-n-t b-r-i-t-t-o-n.com that's my blog and look i'm sorry but i might post you know once a quarter. I'm, I'm a very busy lawyer. I represent startup companies. I have a very, very busy practice, uh, both here in Tampa and in San Francisco. Uh, so I have, unfortunately, very little time to, to, to speak publicly. But they, you, know, you can find me at brentbritton.com. And uh, if, you, uh, if you need legal help or you're starting a company or just want to basically talk or complain or uh, <laughs> vent, you, feel, feel, complain yeah. away, feel free to give me a shout. Absolutely. And now for Fuck Up Nights, it is April 21st from 6 to 9 p.m. And it is at the Rialto Theater in Tampa Bay. Why should people come? One more time. Okay, because it's free. Damn right. <laughs> you got free vodka, free booze. Yeah, no, it, because really, it, it really is a fun event if you want to, you know. No, it is. From it, the first one, it just, it's intimate. Um, there's no networking involved. Well, um, you know, I, I, no, look, I mean, I, if you want to, you can. You get to see people, but, people who have succeeded and, and, and people who've, who've made, who stand up in front of the audience 
And am I right? And yes. they, they and basically just, say, I did this I, wrong. Yeah. This bad thing happened. And you know what? I let me raise my hand. That was my foul. I'll take the foul on that. And that's that's useful because it lets people in the audience realize, you know what? I don't have to be perfect. That entrepreneurship is tough. Anything I'm working on is tough. And I'm going to make mistakes. And that's okay. I just need to keep working at it. You guys changed the way I look at things. I hope the people that are listening are now having the same opinion. And once again, if anybody wants to see uh, more of speeches like this, they can go to Fuck Up Nights in Tampa Bay. That is April 21st from 6 to 9 p.m. and is at the Rialto Theater in Tampa Bay. Well, guys, I'm glad that I met you guys through Law Smith. You really motivated me, and I changed the way I look at everything. Thank you, Brent Britton. Thank you, Ryan. (laughs) This has been Happy Hour. (laughs) I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out.